Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the season finale of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. We did it, Lord have mercy, but let me tell you one thing. This finale episode was actually pretty good. It was emotional, it was messy, it was uh, drama-filled, there were events... Let's get into it. I have a lot to say. I even have the episode on mute in the background so I don't lose track of the things I want to talk about in this recap. So let's get into it. This is probably going to be a long one. Make yourself comfortable, get something to drink or eat, and let's talk. We open up the episode with Sheree and her uh, granddaughter in Cairo in a kind of playhouse land where they're actually just sitting around and, ta and talking and playing. And I love when Sheree is just vulnerable and with her grandchildren, it just paints her in such a tolerable, nice picture, which I appreciate. We then head over to Sonia having a little checkup for her baby that she sadly miscarried. That's what probably everybody knows that has been watching this season. She sadly did have a miscarriage with that one, with that pregnancy. But luckily later on, she has her miracle pregnancy, her miracle baby she's expecting right now. She is, I think, in her second tri trimester, I think you say. And so congratulations to Sonia for actually then just pulling through. And don't get me wrong, Sonia is not my favorite, but it really did make me emotional. Later on in this episode, there was a scene between her and her mother where they discuss the miscarriage and how it happened and how her son every night lays on her stomach and prays to God that he wants a healthy baby sister. And that really just touched me. I mean, the intelligence of that boy, you really can tell that Sonia and Ross do raise their children or the environment that they create in their home is just impeccable for the kids. So, anyways, then we head over to Drew and Ralph. They're sitting down, just chit-chatting about this movie, about the work that Drew is doing. And Ralph is seeming super, you know, kind of dismissive. I mean, that's no, no, no shocker. I mean, that's Ralph. That's how he is. Um, He's talking about how he knows that it's hard work and every time she wants to speak, she gets cut off. They are still not in the bedroom together. He's moved out and Drew gets really upset over this conversation. She goes into the kitchen, kind of wanting her space. Ralph, the instigator that he is, follows up on her and you know, kind of sarcastically asks her if everything's all right and why she's crying again. And so Allison takes notice of that. She's side-eyeing him into hell, as she should. And let me tell you something about Allison. I appreciated her this episode. She came for every friend of's role in the show with just this single episode. She showed up. She showed out. She clocked Ralph. She clocked Courtney. F that flop. We're going to talk about that later on as well. But Allison in this scene actually is getting emotional with her sister as well. Because they are collectively just frustrated at the dumbness, at the stupidity and the heartlessness of Ralph. But anyways... We then proceed to uh, Sheree and her daughter. They're talking about this new long-lost stepdaughter and how Sheree is not angry at her daughter for not telling her or her kids for not telling her because it should have been the, respo the responsibility of Bob, which I get. I think it's really good that she's not mixing that in between 
her children and creating chaos because someone who would have been a bit more impulsive would have been mad at her kids. So then we actually jump to Kenya and her dad and baby Brooklyn. Kenya's preparing some food and just discussing how she is planning to, you know, expand her family. She is talking about how last time or the time when she delivered baby Brooklyn, she lost consciousness. She had to had she had to have a blood infusion but she actually rejected it because of her religion and that was a nice new detail that I never knew so I went on to googling and Kenya was actually raised as a Jehovah's Witness now it's in the article that I've read they had mentioned that she was raised in it but was not super duper religious as you know one might think because i mean we see kenya out here celebrating sometimes and so that kind of contradicts the whole jehovah's witness thing but she then to go back to the ex family expanding conversation she talks to her dad and asks him about the advice he actually thinks it's a really good thing if she wants to use a surrogate i mean that's basically the only option that she has right now and i think that low-key in season 16, if Kenya comes back, we're going to see her surrogacy journey if the producers stop playing games with her because she's being cut out a lot of in this journey of season 15. We've barely seen any of her business ventures, but that's besides the point. Check out my other video for that matter. So um, we then jump to Marlo and Scotty. Um, Marlo is in the La Archive. She is working. She's with her assistant. They're talking about how she's the, you know, not like stylist of Tamar. And they look lovey dovey. I still don't buy that relationship as much as I would like to. I mean, they definitely give off lovebird energy, but. I just feel like maybe she is telling him, hey, why don't you come around? We're filming a scene or two today so she can boost her storyline and actually stay on the show, which let's call it how it is. We would all do the same to kind of get more camera time. So not too much on Marlo, my unpopular, unpopular opinion. I won't harp on that too much. We then jump again to Drew and Ralph. And I'm when I tell you I'm just tired of seeing this man on my screen. I just hope that there that there is no reconciliation because I cannot. I I just don't want to see him on season 16. And they are in counseling again with Drew's therapist. So Ralph is picking back up. They are basically just doing it all on their own. The therapist is sitting back and letting them play it out. And even just when they are having conversations, the therapist can kind of see it all. Ralph is saying that he's moved out of the bedroom and he feels liberated because he wants to. And this is, it's the decision that he wants to make. And Drew is saying that she feels alone in that and she's even compromising by turning down the temperature and he doesn't want to sleep in the heat which i think is just how old are you are you 16 years old ralph because you're acting like a damn child how i have never seen such behavior on the show such gaslighting from a house husband i think he's up there with Peter Thomas, I'm, I'm so sorry to say that, but it's the truth. Um, so at the end, the key question that is asked in this session is, is this somebody you want to keep on working with towards a relationship? And, you know, both of them stayed silent. So, you know, the answer to that one without me even explaining it. 
now we are jumping to all the girls getting ready for the event that Candy and Drew are, you know, throwing for the movie The Past that they did. So um, everybody's getting ready. Everybody's looking stunning as well. Um, about 200 people are attending this little event. Drew is also performing her song. And she's kind of dabbling into her pop star, superstar moment, which it really fits Drew. The vibe is very much superstar for her in this episode and not cringy at all, in my opinion, which is, you know, you have to admit, sometimes Drew can be a little cringe. I have to honestly say that. But this episode, she was just on point. Um, so everybody's arriving at this event, Andrew is getting ready backstage, and she's also, you know, mentioning, in public, Ralph can make a really good impression, but still, she does not know who her husband is behind that facade, which I think is sad. Miss High Cheekbone Cynthia Bailey is also attending the event, everybody's talking about her date, which is actually her hairstylist, and she's saying that the only thing that jason is laying down was this good wig honey and i love and i live for cynthia's confessionals i think she is very much needed back as a full-time housewife if not that maybe kind of a part-time housewife but definitely 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 more as just a friend of to the show so now everybody's arriving and, you know, um, we're revisiting the conversation that who called who the B word. And as, you know, Drew is prepping backstage, the girls that have gotten together actually witness the, you know, Courtney tried to say hi to Allison, Drew's sister, but Allison paid her dust in that moment. She rejected her completely. She just shaking her head. Courtney is, you know, embarrassed. And she's saying that, well, let's not take away the shine from everybody. Let's go and take a corner to ourselves and talk about this thing. And Allison's just not here for it. Courtney is flip-flopping around. I mean, a week ago, she's saying that, She's never called her the B word. She doesn't even have that in her vocabulary. And now she's owning up to it. So Drew is joining the conversation and Drew is just confused. And Courtney is doing a little too much. She's caught up in a lie and it's really not landing the way you're trying to own it. And Allison clocked that right then and there. And the side eyes, the facial expressions killed me. And the finger in the faces were just, it, it, it was a mess. But nonetheless, I was here for it because Allison clocked in the way maybe Manetta should have or other friend ofs or even full times like Sonia and... I digress. <laughs> so everybody's sitting down. They are... Uh, just waiting on Drew's performance. They are clearly also just the only group seen that I've seen that I think everybody is getting along with. Even Marlo and Kenya gave each other a quick hi and just definitely respected the environment of Drew and Candy and Todd for a song in this movie, which I thought was, it's so good when the girls all get together like that in support of everybody that has an event, which I think in the past has gone very much left. But this was a prime example of everybody's, you know, showing up for each other. So we have a little appearance from Mama Joyce and Candy is mentioning how it is a big step in her showing up and actually supporting with Todd because, you know, everything's been up and down with Todd and their relationship together. 
so it's nice for you know the storms to calm down a bit so this is truly drew's redemption that she's not just a woo woo girl she definitely can sing and she definitely did deliver a good performance I mean, the crowd was all here for it. You have everybody filming, everybody bopping their hands to the beat, singing along, feeling the vibes, uh, hugging each other. It was just good, good energy. And this is pretty much where production would have thought this episode to end. But we still have 20 minutes left. And this is already now, you know... The close-ups of each housewives and the techs are getting into the screen. And pretty much we're just now witnessing the demise of Drew's marriage that is going to, you know, after the divorce, after the... What am I talking about? After the filing of divorce. So... Production is picking back up. And actually, before I get into that, did you guys catch how they portrayed Kenya's hair care thing in this episode? They filmed at the event. Claudia Jordan even attended and Cynthia as well. And they showed us four pictures and four small clips of her event. And also her text was very much shady i just want to add that but let's get back into the mess that is production picking up the cameras after the fiasco that is drew's and raf's relationship so everybody's catching on to the news they're reading the blogs marlo is calling up sheree talking about how this whole mess is going down and how drew actually beat ralph 61 minutes to filing because drew uh, ralph's lawyer actually arranged articles to be you know sent out that would say that he filed for divorce first but it was actually drew not a shocker not something that i'm shocked about because ralph is just conniving and disgusting in his ways so now everybody is giving their two cents about it about this whole thing um they are mentioning how they were good just a week prior to filing for divorce but still um nonetheless for me and the viewership probably everybody that watched the last three seasons that drew was on I mean, is not surprised. Let's be real. We're not surprised. And they were good in the image of the public eye. And Ralph always knows how to put on a show in public. And let's say Drew as well, because she's not innocent in all of it too, you know. These allegations that are going on with her and Tai Young, which everybody touches on to that. Moneta pretty much out drew and if that is factual what manita said i think it's kind of a low blow for manita to you know she's trying to be the bone collector of the season but it's not landing and this is the gray zone the gray zone of the season is are we forcing someone to come out of the closet or not is it just because it's drew's storyline is it a bit you know sneaky of everybody else trying to kind of force her to commit and state that she is in fact doing allegedly something with ty that's still one thing i'm not very much in the clear about that i don't know how i have to feel about it because on the, on one side i want her to fully experience what she needs to experience in her sexuality in private and on her own terms but then again we're on a reality tv show so that kind of bites each other um 
We then jump quickly to Sonia, where she explains to her mother the horrific details of her miscarriage and how do see her baby son. He's so cute. How he reacted and that just I when I tell you I broke into tears. I am not exaggerating. I it's 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 crazy that touched me in ways i never thought even now talking about it my voice gets shaky even now talking about it that is it's i, I feel for her and all the best to sonia even if she's on next season or not so they are interviewing the housewives for the confessionals for all of the scenes and we witness Sheree and Drew, you know, filming on the same day. And they have had their differences. And that is also a scene where I started bawling. I've never cried so much on, on an episode of Housewives in general, I think. um, We witnessed a very sweet moment where Drew is, you know... And Drew and Sheree is actually consoling Drew and, you know, being there for her in this divorce and telling her that if she ever needs something, she can call her and, you know, hit her up, even if they had the differences. And that is what I love to see from Sheree. This is what I need from Sheree. If she plans on, if production plans on keeping her longer as a full-time housewife, we need these vulnerable moments because Sheree is not that messy deep down in her core. I mean, she is, but just as messy as she is, she can be so human, raw, real, and sweet. And I appreciated that scene a lot. So now Sheree is also mentioning that her father passed. She's breaking into tears. And that's also the moment where I lost it. Drew is also sharing that, you know, they're just going back and forth in an, in a very human exchange, which was beautiful to see how each, both of them, each other were there and just to listen and to, you know, with open arms. So now we jump ahead to Drew being interviewed for the season for, you know, confessionals and Ralph as well. They are both calling each other's lawyers up as they're answering these questions because both of them are not sure what they can reveal or what they cannot reveal. So you can definitely see it was very much fresh. And in this, on this particular day, after I think two or three hours, the blogs actually, you know, revealed the whole story of Ty and Drew. So the reaction was live. It was live time on how Drew was filming that day. So she's breaking down multiple times and then we have Courtney being interviewed as well and she is saying how she thinks that Drew wanted to adopt uh, Drew wanted for Ralph to adopt her son so she can have the gay lover relationship lifestyle back in Texas with Ty which I think is just such a low blow Courtney please do not come back for next season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta I cannot with you how can you even say something like that it's disgusting to me it's you've known these people for what a year or two that's just not it please don't come back i mean you could have been something but you truly were nothing right now and you have no storyline of your own but that's besides the point She's also saying that she has pictures of Ty and, you know, Drew together, which I want to see those pictures if it's true. Like, you have such a big mouth and you're there just, you know, spreading just rumors, but not really delivering facts. Show the pictures, Courtney. Show them at this reunion if what you say has truth. So... That's pretty much it with this episode. Um, the reunion trailer is also being aired 
at the end. And let me tell you, I am so excited for the reunion. I have deep dived and analyzed the reunion a couple of days back. So check out that video. This video was a long one, but let's give opinions. I will definitely upload a video on my overall opinion of the show this season overall. Maybe after the reunion, maybe prior to the reunion, I will have to see. But this episode was really good, in my opinion. It had everything, it had emotion, it had events, it had drama, it had mess, it had conflict, it had fun shade, it had friendship, it was very, a very well rounded up, you know, season finale to a season that pretty much, yeah, did flop a little bit. So I'm excited to see what goes down next week. And you guys, I think that's all I have to say. I pretty much gave my opinion to everything. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you do not miss out anything from me in the future. Because this winter is going to be intense. We will have three shows to look forward to. Real Housewives of Miami, Potomac, and Beverly Hills these three franchises are coming back so content will be in masses for me thanks so much for watching i appreciate you see you guys next time bye